There may not be too many cities on earth as impressive as Jerusalem. The old city is split up into four different quarters. The Christian quarter, the Muslim quarter, the Jewish quarter, and the Armenian quarter. As a solo traveler, it can be hard sometimes to have the time or to, to be able to document. My hope is that I'll be able to show you what's so wonderful and great about the old city and give you, if you are traveling solo, a nice little list to go off of if you are coming to Jerusalem. very long histories and specific demographics of people that live in them. Now what I want to do now is talk to you a little bit about each one of these neighborhoods and explain the differences between them. Where I am right now is actually in the Jewish quarter. The Jewish quarter is really, really neat. People dressed in Orthodox Jewish clothing on their way to the Temple Mount, the Western Wall. There are also really narrow uh, alleyways lined with Jewish homes and uh, these are the, the really ultra-Orthodox Jews. The Muslim quarter is the largest of all the quarters within the old city. One of the things I've really loved about the Muslim quarter is uh, the shopping. A lot of fun. You can go in there and, and haggle for prices and, and have a good time and buy really cool souvenirs and get really cool memories about Jerusalem. It is worth noting that there are some areas within the Muslim quarter and in the old city where you must be Muslim to enter, namely the Golden Gate, which leads right into the Dome of the Rock. The most of the Muslim quarter is very open, very nice, and a lot of fun to go and explore. So make sure you go in there, make sure you do some shopping. In the Christian quarter, you have all kinds of Christian holy sites, unsurprisingly headlined by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the place supposedly where Christ was crucified and, and put to rest after his death. There are a number of other really significant Christian sites there to see. Like all the quarters, you see priests and Christian holy men, but you also see pilgrims who have come from very far to enter in the church. In fact, that's one thing that's been really, really cool about all of the quarters is to see the religious clothing, the religious garb. The smallest quarter in the entire old city is the Armenian quarter. And you may not figure that in a city with Christian, Muslim, Jewish, that the fourth quarter would be Armenian, but the Armenians really have a unique her heritage and history as it relates to, to Jerusalem. The Armenians were actually one of the first converts to Christianity and came to Jerusalem and settled roots here and established roots. The Armenians who are still living in the old city are descendants from those original settlers who came to Jerusalem all those thousands of years ago. Currently there are 2,500 Armenians living in the Armenian Quarter in the Old City. The main highlight within the Armenian Quarter is the Cathedral of St. James, which is a really beautiful church. And for those of you interested in visiting, it's pretty much all closed all the time, with the exception of about a 40 to 45 minute service Sunday through Thursday. So if you find yourself in the Armenian Quarter, make sure you catch that because it's terrific. It's open to the entire public. And it gives you a glimpse of the religious services as they take place within this really beautiful cathedral, the Cathedral of, of St. James. Each one of these quarters, they all have their own selling points, they all have their own unique charm. Do yourself a favor, get lost in one of these quarters, appreciate the culture, and you'll fall in love with the old city. sites in all of the old city is Dome of the Rock. Dome of the Rock with Al-Aqsa Mosque are the most sacred and holy site for Muslims in the entire city of Jerusalem. And actually with the exception of Medina and Mecca, Al-Aqsa Mosque is the most holy site for all of Muslims. So understandably, this is a very sacred and holy site when it comes to the Islam religion. The Dome of the Rock was built in year 691 AD. 
and it was actually built in the exact same spot where the first and second original Jewish temples stood, which creates the general friction and uneasiness sometimes that exists between the, the Jewish and Islamic faiths. Uh, uh, an area here, Temple Mount, that is very, that is hugely significant for both the Jewish people and the Muslim people because they both have very, very sacred and, and important sites in this exact same area. The dome here was built by a very famous architect. This dome happens to be the oldest surviving Muslim building in existence. Again, when you take into account that fact, it's a very cherished and important site. According to Muslim belief, the Dome of the Rock is the place where the Prophet Muhammad, the noted Muslim prophet ascended to heaven. Now this building, the Dome of the Rock, has suffered some pretty bad damage as it relates to natural disasters. In fact, a few earthquakes have destroyed the dome, have destroyed the edifice. The Dome of the Rock is a very impressive edifice. It stands out, it is special, it's very unique and definitely worth seeing. Make sure to find time to, to come here, pay attention to when the edifice is open. Go and see the Dome of the Rock. The church is the main highlight as it pertains to Christian sites in the entire Old City. Not only in the entire Old City of Jerusalem, but perhaps in the entire Christian world. Now, a quick tip, this place becomes a zoo later in the day. Really, really busy. Understandably, it's a place of pilgrimage and huge popularity and importance among Christians. And if you do come here in the middle of the day, it will not look like this, I guarantee you. Right now, it's 5.25 in the morning. It does get very, very busy, so if you do want to beat the crowds and beat the heat, get here early. The main altar belongs to the Greek Orthodox, which contains the Rock of Calvary. This is the most uh, visited part. Huge areas of importance, a lot of huge lines as well if you go there late in the day. Once you're inside, you will have a few thousand friends you can share the church. What you're looking at just right here is the rotunda, which is beautiful. It looks very well maintained or very well restored, I should say. The natural light seeps in through the dome. Don't forget to do a little lap around the rotunda. Go up and, and appreciate it and explore as much space as you can on the inside, realizing that if you are here in the middle of the day, you may have to wait a while to get into to see some of the really holy sites. But it's worth it and this place is really terrific on the inside. Remember that once inside you have a lot of space to explore. You can go under each rotunda, all the domes. Um, the main attractions, kind of the main holy sites, will have a lot of lines waiting around them, but you can find all your own kind of private corners here and there to just appreciate uh, the church and, and recognize and appreciate its, its history. It's a lot bigger on the inside than it appears on the outside. Maybe that's just kind of the way that the old Jerusalem Everything kind of looks kind of squished together or smaller. All things considered, the church seems pretty well maintained or well restored. It's in good shape and supports a lot of foot traffic.
Western Wall has been a site for prayer and for the Jewish people for literally centuries. The first attachment to this site dates back to the 4th century. The Western Wall is actually a remnant from the second Jewish temple. Remember, the first and second temples in, in Jewish history were built right here on the Temple Mount. It's located on the western side of the Temple Mount, hence the name Western Wall. There's a number of people who come here right to the wall. They, they, they pray, they put their hand on the wall. That's a very spiritual experience for a Jewish person. Each year, Jews come here to Israel, to the Old City, to visit the Western Wall. The Western Wall is considered the most holy and sacred site for all of Jews. The wall itself is about 488 meters long and pretty imposing when you go and, and view it. One thing I personally enjoy about the Western Wall is that it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So you can come here no matter when and view the wall in the evening, uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, late, late, early, early. And there's probably guaranteed always someone here praying at the wall. On Shabbat, on the Sabbath, on, any, on other holy days, you're not allowed to use cameras. You're actually not even allowed to use phones or technology of any kind. Even if you have your phone in your hand, they'll ask you to put it away. The Western Wall is a hugely interesting place and it's an awesome spot that you'll love to see, that you'll be interested in seeing, regardless if you're a part of the Jewish faith or not. So come here, whether it's in the morning, in the evening, Early, early, late, late, it's always open and it's always a wonderful experience. Make sure you pass by and you appreciate and visit the Western Wall. Those visiting Jerusalem who want to get the best view of the entire Old City, you need to come to the Mount of Olives. Here, just before the sun is rising, I just want to highlight the importance of coming up to the Mount of Olives at the non-peak hours. Like right now, I'm up here around 5 a.m. The sun is just about to rise and you get that glow against the city and I'm literally the only person up here, which is awesome to have this spot to myself. Try and pick a good time. In the middle of the day, it can get kind of busy, you'll see tour buses arrive, it's kind of a mess. Like many of the things in Jerusalem, this era has a lot of history. You'll find the Garden of Gethsemane that's located really close to here. So a lot of ties in particular to Christianity related to this ridge here. If you want to get that classic shot of the old city, you need to come to the Mount of Olives to be able to experience this shot. There's really nothing like it you get an unrivaled shot at one of the most famous cities in the world. If you are walking up to the Mount of Olives or spend any time up at that observation point looking back at the old city, you will, without any doubt, notice the Jewish cemetery that is located just adjacent to the Mount of Olives. In fact, if you do walk up, you'll see a number of Jewish graves. So I can highly recommend if you do come up to the Mount of Olives, going up early in the morning and walking up as early as you can, maybe around five or six in the morning, and you'll have this whole area to yourself. It is such a unique location for a cemetery, especially on the backdrop of such a wonderful view of the old city and you can appreciate the graves here within the Jewish cemetery. So I highly recommend, if you are making your way up to the Mount of Olives, just to come down a little bit and to pay your respects and appreciate the cemetery and get, again, another terrific view of the old city. Behind me, you see just a number of graves that rest along the mountain just adjacent to the Mount of Olives. The very top, you see that beautiful observation point. That's where the mountain, Mount of Olives is located. From there, you get that perfect view of the old city. The ideal times to go there are very early in the morning or around right now, it's around 6.30. I'm about to head up there again to do a sunset shot. The sunset shots are terrific. Within and around the Mount of Olives, you have the Garden of Gethsemane, you have the Tomb of the Virgin Mary, a number of other historically very important sites to, to Christians. Make sure you put the Mount of Olives on your list. Go visit it. Catch a sunrise and a sunset, you won't regret it.
The Ramparts Walk is a popular pedestrian walking tour just inside and outside the Old City. In fact, the tour itself takes place on the outside gates of the Old City. There are two directions in which you can walk, the Ramparts Walk, and both of them give you pretty unique and distinct views. And so it's worth your time if you want to see a different side of the Old City from above and also see some of the neat rooftop landscapes that are here. There are cool apartments and buildings and settlements on top of these buildings in the old city that you wouldn't see otherwise. So the Ramparts Walk offers a unique viewpoint and perspective of all the old city and view all the quarters um, and see a site that you probably wouldn't have seen before. are coming to Jerusalem, obviously you'll want to pay attention to the weather forecast. The weather can be sometimes inconsistent even in summer months. Some simple weather advice is obviously dress practical, wear sunscreen. A really good tip that I found while I'm here in Jerusalem is that it's best to hit the highlights either early in the morning or later in the evening just to avoid the heat. But the weather appears to be pretty cool today. Make use of the mornings and the evenings. The entire old city is open 24 hours a day. Now, during the nighttime, a lot of things are shut down and more quarters are more active than others. For example, the Jewish quarter is, is pretty lively at night. You can go and see the Western Wall 24 hours a day, Temple Mount, that area. But other places are more shut down. But just make use of your time and make use of the mornings and the late afternoons or early evenings or nighttime to avoid the heat. Coming through the old city at night also just gives you a different perspective. Since much of the city is closed down, you'll have a lot of the streets to yourself. You can walk down these, these streets that are jam-packed during the day. The old city is very safe even in the middle of the night. Uh, you, the only safety concern will probably just have to be you'll have to watch where you step. Some of the alleyways and, and roads at night are poorly lit so you may stub your toe or trip and fall if you're not careful. One area I can recommend is just right outside the Jaffa Gate at night. There's a lot of foot traffic from the folks leading the Tower of David night show. It brings a whole new level of charm and excitement to the old city. As impressive and as charming as the city is during the day, the night gives you a whole new look that you have to experience. When it comes to getting that spectacular view of the old city, you certainly have your options. In my preparation for my trip here to Jerusalem, I did some research on what were considered the greatest spots to get panoramic views of the old city with some of the major attractions in the background. Now there may be others, in fact I'm sure there are others, but these are just the five that I looked up before I came here or I found when I was here that gave me a terrific view. The first one is actually the spot I'm at right now. This is the Aish HaTorah building. Uh, it's a building just adjacent, just across from the Western Wall, which is to my left in Temple Mount. Here you can pay just 10 shekels to come up to the top and the building has a lot of other things to do here. It's like a museum. It's a beautiful building, but it gives you a tour, a terrific view of the Western Wall and Temple Mount. You can see Dome of the Rock in the background. The second view I would recommend is the Austrian Hospice, which is a guest house in the Muslim Quarter that has a rooftop observatory that gives you again a very dynamic view of the old city. Kind of the, the view that you're seeing uh, behind me but from the other side. In fact you can probably see the, the observatory from, from here. It's just on the other side just behind me. The next view I would highlight is the Tower of David panoramic. The Tower of David complex is this area just outside the Jaffa Gate. They also have like a night show, a light, a night show they do every night. 
but I, if you pay only 15 shekels, you can go up to their panoramic, which gives you a view of the old city from just outside the Jaffa Gate. So you get to see uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You get to see a lot of the Christian quarters sites there. Next view I would highlight is the Ramparts Walk, which we've talked a little bit already. It gives you a perspective from outside the city gates. You walk on the exterior gate to get shots of all the quarters and neighborhoods, both inside the old city and then just right outside the old city. Lastly, the, the, the most impressive view is one that we've already covered and one that you should definitely see, which is the Mount of Olives, which is essentially the king of views in Israel. My time in Jerusalem has come to an end, and I wanted to just take a moment to talk about just how impactful and special this city is. My brief review of the city is, it's fantastic. It's the place I've been to with the strongest culture by far. I guess that's what happens when you take all these different religions and put them together in one spot that's less than a quarter mile, which is the old city. Even if you're not religious, even if you're not a history buff, you will love Jerusalem. Meeting people, having the sights, the smells, and realizing the history that comes with this wonderful, terrific place. Come to Jerusalem and experience this magic for yourself because I'm pretty sure you've never been to a city quite like this. And that may be, in fact, because there's no city like this on Earth.